This over here is my new favorite laptop. Perhaps you've been eyeing a MacBook Air and you're thinking this is a great laptop. What if I told you that this over here is a better alternative at pretty much every single way? I'd say you're full of crap. Especially at the price point. And it's gonna last you many times longer than a MacBook Air. Well, please let me tell you more about this ZenBook Pro 14 OLED from ASUS. Okay, Hacha. Fire up this laptop. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So then, what is this laptop? This is Asus ZenBook 14 OLED laptop, and this is the 2024 model with the Intel Core Ultra chips inside. And that's one of the key reasons why this has become such an interesting device to me, because finally we have a battery life that's an all day battery life. I haven't used a Windows laptop before that lasts the whole day. The battery life for this one is truly amazing. I've already been hours and hours on it and I'm looking at time left and it says eight hours, 30 minutes, something like that. I've never seen anything like that before. I do wanna say that there are two different types of colors available. This kind of a blue-ish color and then a white light color. I highly recommend checking out the white as well. I'll leave a link in the description below because this darker color has a bit of a fingerprint magnet going on in here. As you can see, there's quite a few fingerprints and I don't think I've got particularly greasy fingers. So fingerprints, not so good in here. But regardless, I think this looks absolutely amazing. Now stick with me because there's a few more reasons why this is better than the MacBook Air. Another one of the absolute amazing key selling points of this laptop is the screen. This screen here is just top of the range screens that you can get. So much better than what MacBook offers. There's no notches. This is amazing. This is 16 by 10 3K OLED display and it's also a touch screen which just adds another bit to it that I am personally a huge fan of. Now, some people say you don't really need a touchscreen uh, because, you know, it's not very helpful. Well, if you use Asus Pen Input, for example, because it goes 100% flat on the floor, so you can just draw or use it however you want. Especially if you have to do a lot of filling in documents and, you know, moving around different things, you can just tap on the screen different columns, boxes to fill in everything. And I like the touchscreen feature of that so much. Now, obviously comparing this screen to MacBook, this screen just wins it at every single aspect, whether it's color accuracy, color space, brightness, well, that's about the same, 500 nits on both of them, HDR, 10 bit, but OLED is even better than what we get on MacBook Air. Now, even the refresh rate is better. This is 120 Hertz and MacBook is 60 Hertz, but this also has now a new feature called a dynamic refresh rate on Windows, which means that if your screen is not using anything or you're not doing anything on the screen, it drops it down to 60 Hertz, which is kind of um, a little bit of a, what we see on Apple, the ProMotion technology. But the ProMotion only comes with the MacBook Pros, which is up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. Here, we just have 120 Hertz in here, which makes the usage and the way you use the laptop just so fluid and so snappy and just feels very, very fast. To save the battery life, if you don't use it, it drops down to 60. Now, I wish it dropped it down even further. If you're not using, for example, right now, it's still refreshing at 60 frames per second, but we could do it one frame per second because nothing's going on in there. If there's no movement, why don't we lower it even further to reduce the laptop or the battery life? While talking about displays, you know that now the new MacBook Air supports two external displays or one external when internal is on as well. Well, this guy here, oh my word, I just plugged into every single port what I could and I, I got four displays. There's two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the side. I got displays out from both of them and then one HDMI on the side. And I bet you could get even more displays out if you actually split the Thunderbolt cable into more HDMI cables or something like that. 
and the internal display was still running. So if you need multiple screens, this is the guy to get. While we add it, let's talk about the ports because this is where it gets even more impressive. Now, MacBook Air has only two Thunderbolt ports and then one headphone and mic combo jack. Here, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, headphone and combo jack, HDMI port, and then on the other side, we have one USB type A port, which means that when you're presenting with this, whether in work or whatever you're doing, you don't need to bring with you a dongle. It's a dongleless laptop, which is another huge benefit of having this over the MacBook. Now this curving these edges down here to make it seem very slim on the edge here, but they could do a MacBook kind of a design where they just make it all flat and a bit more bulkier. And then they could add even bigger battery to this, which makes the battery life even longer, which I would be a big fan of. Complementing the design is also the build quality. It is very, very high build quality. Now, if you're looking at the screen reflex, this does not bend like at all. I'm really pushing this here. And this is very, very solid. The Gorilla Glass and all of the touchscreen, and this is metal. The chassis, everything feels very, very good design. Now there is a little bit of a chassis flex, when pushing in the middle of the keyboard in there, but it's a small laptop and that's expected from it. One of the main things that you work with on a laptop is the keyboard and the touchpad because that's how you interact with the content. And I'm so happy to say that I absolutely love this keyboard. The keyboard is very, very tactile and a little bit of spongy and soft feeling. It doesn't feel hollow. There's a bit more weight to it, but it's one of my favorites that I have ever tried. Now, I am not a big mechanical keyboard fan. And if you're expecting that, this is not the laptop for you go look at some gaming laptops but to type on this it's such a nice feeling it's not too loud so i'm not going to be you know making too much noise when i don't want to and the trackpad is very nice as well now this is not a haptic trackpad so it's a little bit of further down it is on a hinge there but it's very very soft it's a soft click and the trackpad is very very large the trackpad actually has one extra little key feature here that you haven't seen perhaps in some of the other laptops. Because it's a small keyboard, it doesn't have a numpad. When you press this corner button here on the trackpad, you actually have a numpad. So if I've got a pin in there, as you can see right now, I'm just gonna put my pin in. There we go. So if you need the numpad and type in the numbers, you can do that by just this little button on the side. Other than that, I'm enjoying this trackpad a lot and I've got nothing bad to say. Next, the speakers. Now, I wasn't a big fan of the Asus ZenBook S speakers. I thought they were a little bit hollow and not that good of a design. These speakers in here, Harman and Carden, oh, they've done a great job. Let's have a look at some of this here. I guess all I have to say is they go very loud and when I've been watching movies or enjoying content with this laptop, I've turned it down so, so, so low because they just provide a lot of sound, a lot of bass, a lot of everything. I'm happy with them. Now, are these the best laptop speakers out there? I don't know. Do I enjoy them? Absolutely. Then you want to know about the performance. What's the performance like? Now, I have tested the Intel Core Ultra 7. 155H. Now you could get the Core 9 and Core 5 on this one as well, but I've got the perfect middle ground. In terms of single core score, we're a little bit lower than the M3, but in terms of multi-core, we're a little bit faster. Now, do I feel the difference using this than my big PC? This is super, super fast. Everything that I'm doing on it is very uh, snappy. All this is for is typing emails, answering comments and doing a lot of script writing. And when you're just doing that with a laptop, can you do some video editing with it? Yeah. Can you do some photo editing with it? Yeah. Is it the best at them? No, but you can do them. And I think that's what this is for because it doesn't have dedicated graphics card. It's got integrated Intel Arc GPU on the core ultra which you have there. And that's plenty to just do any cutting and video editing on your timeline. If you want a video editing laptop, this is not the laptop for you. Perhaps you want to look into the ProArt StudioBook 16, which I've reviewed on the channel, which actually gives you so much more performance. It's not very easy to carry around. This guy is so light. The weight for this is only 1.28 kilos, 40 grams heavier 
than the MacBook Air. The thing about MacBook Air is that the MacBook Air is 13.6 inches, whereas this is 14 inch screen. So you actually get a larger screen. Also, this guy has a 75 watt hour battery, which is so big for this form factor, the MacBook only has 52.6 watt hours. So as you can see, they've packed a massive battery in here, making it still weigh about the same as a MacBook Air, but give you an all day battery life, which I'm enjoying so much. You've got integrated webcam as well as Windows Hello, which means that your sign in is gonna be super, super fast. If you haven't used Windows Hello yet, you're gonna love that because Apple doesn't yet provide a face sign in with any of the devices. It's gonna have to be fingerprint reader, but in here we also have a physical switch to close the webcam, just in case you're afraid someone might be sneaking up on you. The webcam's all right, and I've got nothing bad to say about that. It's not like the best out there, but for a laptop this size, it's okay. Now, let's talk about the absolute best to last feature, the price. This guy here costs $12.99. If you look at the MacBook, what you get for the same price, $12.99, you get 512 gigabytes of storage, and here you get one terabyte of storage. And the storage is faster. For MacBook Air, you get eight gigabytes of RAM. In here, we get 32 gigabytes of RAM, four times the amount. But if you do wanna upgrade the MacBook to the same spec or as close to the same spec, but the RAM would still be 24 gigabytes instead of 32 gigabytes as we have here, the MacBook Air is gonna cost extra $600. That's almost 50% more expensive for pretty much nothing and still lower specs. Do you understand how crazy this is? Now I also mentioned that this is more durable or lasts longer than the MacBook and here's why. MacBook's SSD is soldered in. This guy here has an M.2 SSD and you can upgrade it, downgrade it. You can actually change it yourself if you want to, which is really, really nice. The one terabyte SSD over here has 600 terabytes written spec, which means that you can write 600 terabytes of files, of stuff on it, and then the SSD life is gonna be kaput. It's gone, right. Apple uses the chips from very similar manufacturers, whether it's Western Digital, you know, SanDisk, wherever the chips are coming from. The industry standard is 600 terabytes written for this one. Now, because Apple's capacity is half the size, the actual terabyte written spec gets spliced in half as well. So now Apple's SSD for the same price point, which is 512, has 300 terabytes written spec, which is half of it. Bear in mind, the way Mac OS works is that because of the eight gigabytes of RAM, what you have on the MacBook Air, the operating system starts swapping a lot of the RAM onto the SSD because you've got some free space on the SSD. When you're not using something, it caches it on the SSD, which means that it writes the files on the SSD. And then you, when you start working on it again, voila, it reads it and then writes some other stuff on the SSD, which means that it's caching constantly stuff onto the SSD, which makes the SSD on the MacBook Air go down even faster because it doesn't have enough physical RAM to actually supply you with everything that you need to do with eight gigabytes of RAM. And I know Mac guys will say, eight gigabytes is about the same as 16 on Windows. It's not. It's not the same in terms of performance, especially when the lower SSD capacity just starts hurting your SSD performance. And because you can't change anything on your MacBook Air, you're gonna be running your MacBook Air to the ground even faster just because the RAM capacity is killing the SSD and because they're all soldered in and you can't change them, it's just gonna run out faster than this guy. Let's say this one terabyte SSD just goes kaboot, kaboom. You just swap it out, extra 70 something dollars maybe, and voila, you can just go for it. That's why I think this ZenBook is a better option than the MacBook Air and also costs less and lasts longer. I don't know why people aren't talking about this even more. This is great. Now, because I wanted to compare the performance, this to the M3, I actually bought the M3 MacBook Air and that's coming in. So we're gonna test it out and check out how this is gonna go, but that's gonna be another video. Now, in conclusion, this laptop is something that I wish I knew before. And I could say very easily that this is a perfect MacBook Air alternative in terms of price, performance, everything. If you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. And if you have any other questions for me, reach out in Minec, which I'll link in the description below as well. But I'll go back to using this laptop and Asus. I might just disappear with this laptop because I don't wanna give it back to you. I might just have to buy it because it's it's really really nice move over i'm emailing the firm i just found our next associate